Hi guys, welcome to my channel. And today we're doing a little test here. We're using a new camera, so we're just trying to figure out which angle is best for this new camera and all the functions. Well, anyways, as always, we're gonna talk about a test set that happened here in Korea in October. It's coming from October 20th, which happened at 11.30 a.m. So guys, are you ready? Uh, I've been getting lots of messages all through my YouTube channel asking like lots of people asking me how can they get higher score on TOEIC speaking? The levels that they're aiming for were level 7 or even higher. So today I made it a little special. I prepared some um, comments and tips on how to achieve that score that you guys were asking for, okay? So stay tuned and let's talk about it. One by one, I'll t give you each and every, t every tip that, you know, re regarding each part that I talk about. So we're gonna get in with part one. Let's start. All right, so part one is always a reading a passage aloud, right? We have two passages and, uh, you know, it, it's, to me, it seems like one seems to be a little easier and one seems to be harder compared to the other one. So they are trying to make a balance here. One will be easy and compared to the first one or the second one, the other one will be harder, okay? So if you're lucky, if you felt that both of them are easy for you, then you're lucky, but you know, it's not always the case. So just prepare, be prepared for that. And here it goes my, the tip, the tip for part one. I wanted to tell you guys, you gotta sound natural. You have to control your intonation to sound natural. I'll give you an example. If I don't control my intonation, then in a passage would sound like this. Do you need help in the kitchen? Are you a terrible cook? Don't worry, subscribe to Blue Apron today. Blue Apron sends recipes with one person portions to your home each day. This is something that like a lot of Korean students would do. They would just read a passage, but without any emotion. They're not like, you know, trying to deliver this passage to somebody, but they're just reading. They're just reading the English words. So if you want to get a higher level on TOEIC speaking, let's say level seven or level eight, then you have to sound natural. You have to control your intonation. The passage that I've chosen today starts with two questions, especially the questions that doesn't have why, who, when in the beginning. You have to pull up the ending. Like, do you need help in the kitchen? You have to sort of pull it up, right? Are you a terrible cook? You have to pull it up so it would sound like questions, okay? So make sure you control your intonation that you would sound more natural. All right, and the words here weren't that hard, but I see the word recipe and the recipe, it's a three syllable word. And when you're reading this word, it's recipes. The stress goes on the first syllable. So it's recipes or recipe. Okay, so I'll read it again. Like I said, I'm going to control my intonation so I would sound more natural. Listen carefully. Do you need help in the kitchen? Are you a terrible cook? Don't worry, subscribe to Blue Apron today. Blue Apron sends recipes with one person portion to your home each day. Simply follow the recipe, cook the food, and enjoy your homemade dinner. Visit our website to learn more. Okay, so when, even when I said don't worry, notice how I said really naturally, like as if I was talking to my friend, don't worry, okay? Don't say don't worry, okay? It doesn't sound so natural. Okay, so that was my tip for part one. Try to sound natural. Try to read the passage as if you're saying this to somebody. Okay, now we're gonna move on to part two. And the tip for part two, I'm gonna go into it directly, is try to use as, ma as many verbs as you can. Okay, so people somehow like get more focused on talking about the things that they see. They see a woman, I can see a woman, I can see a man. He's wearing a blue cardigan, she's wearing a green shirt, she has long hair things like that. Those are all nouns, okay? Nouns, they count, but they don't bring you a lot of scores. So if you wanna score higher, if you wanna get higher level on TOEIC speaking, part two, it's gotta be more focused on the verbs, okay? You gotta be focusing more on the verbs. For instance, uh, the woman on the left, you would talk about how she's holding a tray, okay? And she's showing a product, right? And the woman here in the middle, she's doing something like this. So you would say she's touching her chin and maybe she's thinking, right? The guy here, he's smiling. He seems like he's talking to the woman, his girlfriend or something. And it looks like they are trying to 
buy something, right? They're shopping. They're going to buy it. So you got to focus more on the verbs, what's happening in the picture, rather than what you're seeing in the picture. So verbs count more. So stay focused on the actions, the verbs, okay? So I'll give you my answer, as always. Voila! I have my phone here. People who have been commenting me on my phone that it's really old, it's, it's actually iPhone 6 Plus or something. Yeah, I think maybe it's 6 Plus or 7. And the case is the real authentic Apple case, but it's like all ripped off like here, it's all destroyed. So people are telling me, why aren't you changing your phone? Because it's working. It still works, that's why. The camera is quite old, but it's still working. And I just like, you know, used to use the one that I'm already used to. So I like to use the phone that I'm, you know, I have, I'm attached to this phone so anyways it's old but anyway the timer's working so I'll see I'll show you how it goes this is a picture taken at a department store there are three people in this picture on the left side of the picture there's a woman she looks like a clerk she has long hair and she's wearing a white shirt and a black skirt she's also wearing one glove she's holding a tray and showing a necklace she's smiling too on the right side of the picture, I can see two people and they look like a couple. One of them is a woman. She has brown hair. She's wearing a green shirt. She's touching her chin. And of course, one of them is a man. He's wearing a green, no, 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 blue cardigan. He has a mustache and a beard. And both of them are looking at the necklace. Maybe they're going to buy the necklace. Okay, so that's how I talked for... 45 seconds okay I kept on checking the time I was trying to show you the time that's why I was holding it like this and I had to do it like this but when you're doing it for yourself you don't have to like turn left or turn to the right to look at the clock so make sure you have the timer in front of you right next to the screen so you don't miss the time you have to be in control of your answer okay you have to know how much you can talk about within the limited time so it's always always so important to train your speaking with a timer when it comes to getting ready for TOEIC speaking okay so again for part two guys if you want to level up it's got to be all about the verbs 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 count now we're going to move on to part three the tip here you know recently there were some very very um difficult topics which appeared on part three and the topics were like donations donations and let's say um volunteer work that was a tough one electricity bill or was it social media those kind of things so you know they're trying to always come up with new kind of topics so you got to be ready for it so you have to sort of like widen or broaden your boundaries on like the t topics that you could talk about you can deal with so normally I would tell my students to go for the easy normal topics like the everyday topics about restaurants eating out parks exercising but that's like the first step and if you're ready and feel more comfortable if you're feeling more comfortable about topping up the, about those basic topics then you have to broaden your you know uh, let's say like the field of things that you can talk about okay so today I have these questions about movies, which is a very, very generous, very moderate, very, you know, normal topic. All right. And here, oh, sorry. The tip, the tip for part three is talk as much as you can and don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. You got to talk over, on and on and on and over and over. Yes, just 계속 is Korean. 계속. Keep on talking. All right. You just talk on and on and on. Even if you get cut off in the middle of your answer, it's okay. That's why I always tell you guys, like in the beginning, you have to give the direct answer to the question being asked and you gotta just keep on talking. Don't stop, okay? So here's the first question. What kind of movies do you usually watch? Okay. Well, I like to watch action movies because it's very fun and exciting. And whenever I watch action movies, I can get rid of stress. So when I have free time, I like to watch action movies. It's my favorite. And recently I've been watching John Wick series and they're so fun. See, I sort of got cut off, but you know, I already said I like action movies and I just wanted to describe more things about action movies and what kind of action movies I like, which is John Wick the Keanu Reeves series, right? So yeah, you just keep on talking. It doesn't matter, matter whether you get cut off or not, okay? Uh, what devices do you usually watch movies on? Okay, 
Well, nowadays I watch movies on my smartphone. I'm always outside, but I always have my smartphone with me. So all I have to do is use an app called Netflix. I can watch so many movies on my smartphone. It's so fascinating. It's a small device, but I can you know watch. See, I just kept on talking regardless of only having like one seconds remaining, one second or two seconds remaining. So I told you guys, keep on talking. Don't stop talking. Okay. The last question: Which has more influence on you when choosing movies to watch? Reviews, advertisements, or cast? Hmm. Well, personally, reviews have more influence on me when choosing movies to watch because I love to watch movies, but I don't have lots of time. So whenever I watch a movie, I want to watch a good one. And in order to choose a nice movie, I always read reviews. I can compare the plots, the cast. I can check the ratings, and sometimes there could be spoilers. But I think it's the best way to choose a nice movie for sure. So I always check the reviews to choose a movie. It's very helpful. And and actually, I wanted to talk more, but that's when I and when the timer hit thirty, the second thirty seconds. So that was my limit. That's all I was able to talk about. But I know I've talked a lot. I've given lots of things in my answer, my thirty second long answer. So that's it. I talked for a long time. Okay. So again, guys, remember for part three, talk as much as you can and don't stop talking. Period. All right, now we're gonna move on to part four, which is respond to questions using the information provided. And here today, the information is online business seminar schedule. Okay, so as always, we have the basic information on the top, which is the location, the date. On the left, there's the time information, the topic, and the speaker. And as always, when you see that cancellation line, the red long line there on the bottom of it. That means that it's gonna be one of the questions, okay? One of the questions will be dealing with that cancellation line, most of the time. So make sure you notice that, okay? So here goes the first question. It's、um, Jenny Sanders. She says, "I'm going to present at the seminar, and but I need more information to get ready for it." Her name is Jenny Sanders. So could you please answer a few questions for me? So she's gonna ask you some questions. Now the first one. What's the first thing on the schedule, and what time does it start? And I will say, it will start at 9:30 a.m. and there will be a welcoming speech given by James Kin. So please keep that in mind. You see, I spoke for only eight seconds, and it's really hard to talk longer in this part for this part because you know the answers are there, and there's nothing much you can add on to. So I said something like, "Please keep that in mind. Please don't forget," and that's as far as you can get. Okay, so it doesn't matter for this part whether your answer is short, as long as you give the correct answer using the correct grammars. Remember that. That's the tip for part four. Give the correct answer using the correct grammars. Now the second question, question eight. I think my lecture might take longer than expected. Will that be okay? Yes, at two p.m. there was a lecture, but it has been canceled. So you don't have to worry about it. You can talk as much as you can. You have time. You can spend all the time you want. You know, it's okay. Talk as long as you want. It's gonna be fine. Okay. So I just kept on talking and talking and talking. But the only information that is actually required is. You know, her name was Jenny Sanders. Remember, I told you I was emphasizing her name because I knew that her name's going to be involved, getting got and get involved in the question. She said, "I think my lecture might take longer." I being Jenny Sanders. So, will that be okay? And you see the cancellation line. She the, the thing after her session has been canceled, so she can talk longer, at least until 3 p.m. That's why I said. It has been cancelled, so don't worry. You can keep talking. You can keep lecturing. You can give a lecture until 3 p.m. I just kept saying some, you know, re- related information. Okay. And lastly, the question number nine: What are some major topics which will be covered before lunch? This is an easy one. This is a very easy question. So. Aside from welcoming speech, right? Because we're talking about major topics, guys. Welcoming speech, opening speech, closing speech, lunch, Q and A sessions—they're not major topics. The topics gotta have topics, okay? <laughs> so there are two.、Uh, there are two at 10 a.m. Jeremy Rogers will give a speech on SNS marketing. 
At 11 a.m., there will be a speech on language apps given by Matthew Frederick. And both of them, both of them should be very helpful. So don't miss them. Don't miss any of it. Okay. So again, I talked, I spoke everything on that chart. There was nothing more to say. So I was only able to use 23, 20 seconds, but that's it. That's all you can say using the information provided. Okay. So for this part, you know, timing your answer isn't so necessary. It's not so meaningful, but you know, in the test still, you're given the time restricted 15 seconds or restricted 30 seconds. So just try to get used to it. Okay. So again, part four, the tip is give the correct answer using correct grammars. Okay. Now we're going to move on to part five and the tip for part five here. Okay. A lot of you have been asking me, I, my new listening skills are really poor. I can't listen. I can't understand what they're saying. And what should I do in that case? Well, um, sweetheart, it's, it's, you know, it's a fact that you have to be able to listen in order to solve the question for part five. If you can't listen, then it means that you can't solve the question for part five. So you have to improve your listening skills. You have to practice more and more and more to listen better. And in order to get higher level, like we're talking level seven or level, level eight, eight here, it means that you have to be able to listen and understand and you have to be able to summarize. So the tip for part five is you should summarize as much as you can from the message or the conversation you heard. Okay. So if there's a phone on the screen, obviously it's going to be a one person message. And if there's a, a, you know, scene, a picture of some people having a meeting, then it's going to be a two people's conversation. So whatever you heard, you have to sort of summarize what you had heard in the message and that's going to get you to score. Okay. So I'm going to first give you the message. The message says, hello, my name is Anne Rice. I'm the owner of Anne's Home Appliances. Since I've been doing business for a long time, I have lots of regular customers who live in the area. And lately, some of them have moved to the new residential area near Washtona Avenue. It isn't far away, but I'm still worried that these customers might not come back to my store. And since they're moving into new homes, there is a huge chance they would need to buy new home appliances. So I would like to have them return to my store and purchase home appliances for their new homes. And I already put out some online ads, but they haven't been so effective. And that's why I decided to call you. Since you also run a business in this area, I want to get your tips on how to do what to do in this case. How can I prevent losing customers? And what would you do in my situation? Please return my call. And af uh, after hearing this, my phone number is 555-1234. And I hope that you can give me some good tips. Thanks. Goodbye. So the situation is this person here, Anne, has, an, has a home appliance store where they sell computers, washing machines, refrigerators, blah, blah, blah. She had customers, but they moved to another area and she wants them to, she wants them to come back to her store to buy refrigerators, TVs, and all that kind of stuff. So what are we going to do? And online advertising didn't work. That's what she's saying for sure. So now we have to talk for one minute and the most effective way, the best way to do this is to memorize the template that I give you. Remember the template? We always talk about the template here for part five. So the template helps you. It's designed to talk, make you talk for one minute. And the first part, the beginning part of the template is mainly about summarizing what you've heard. And the latter part, the second part of the template is about provi provi providing the solutions. And I always tell my students to provide at least two solutions. One is not enough, so always go for two. All right, so in this case, I would say if online didn't work, you know, if it's like a local kind of thing, I think the local newspapers, local TV channels, local magazines might work, right? The community websites. And um, also like just call them. They're your formal customer. Just call them, give them a message. I always get messages from like stores that I've visited and you know, tell them about the sale that you're having. You're like what kind of discounts you would offer them. I'm pretty sure there's a high chance for them to return. So that's what you would say, right? But it's really hard to just, you know, talk on and on and on and rattle for like a minute. It's really hard. That's why I tell you guys to use the template and I'm going to do it. So listen carefully. 
Hello, this is Gwen. I heard that you're running a business in this area, and you're the owner of the home appliance store, and you have lots of customers. However, there is a problem because some regular customers move to another area, and you're afraid that you might lose them. So you'd like to know what to do about it, and you'd like to get some help with this matter. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about the situation. However, I'm happy to say that there is a way to help you out. And after looking into the situation, I came up with the following suggestions. And I think it is a good idea to advertise in the local newspapers and magazines. That should be effective. And why don't you give a huge discount to those returning customers? That should be very helpful too. Now those are my suggestions. If you need more help, just feel free to call me back anytime. Good luck. Bye bye. Good luck. Good luck. Bye. Okay. So I know I was talking a little fast because I wanted to summarize more, more from the message that I heard. So I said you are the owner, you are the home appliance store owner, and you have lots of regular customers, but they move, and they're you're, you're worried that you might lose them. That's already like five sentences. So I was being really, you know, precise on what I had heard in the message. Aside from that, I was giving two different kinds of pro 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 solutions. The first one is advertise in local newspapers and magazines, which are totally different than online or internet, you know. And the second one is huge discount. Give huge discounts to who? To the returning customers. When they return, they get higher, you know, discount rate. That's what I was saying. Give a huge discount to the returning customers. So the solutions always convey that I was listening really carefully. I know all the details, so I was giving a solution or solutions that best fit the situation, and that's the most important thing. So again, guys, the tip to get a higher score for part five is you should summarize as much as you can from the message or the conversation you had heard. Okay, now moving on to part six. It's already the last part. You know, every time I film this, it's like it's getting shorter and shorter because I know exactly what to tell you guys, and I just want to go for the like main things. The, the main thing I don't want to go on, on and on and on. because I repeat this all the time every week, right? You guys know what to say. You just want to get some like major core tips. So for part six today, I have this for you. The tip is. Be a good storyteller. You have to provide a story. It's the most important thing. This is going to give a smooth flow, okay, to the logic, to the opinion you're trying to, you know, tell them without having to talk so smart and logically, okay. So you don't have to be. You don't have to sound like a professor. You don't have to sound like a professional. You just like tell your own story to support your opinion, your idea, and that's it. And the best way to do this, the easiest way to do this, is to be a good storyteller. Period. So be a good storyteller. And this is what I'm going to say for the question. Today's question is: Among the following things, which is better for students to do when going on a field trip? Which is better for students to do when going on a field trip? So if you have gone to, if you have gone through elementary school, middle school, or high school, at some point, I'm pretty sure you've been on a field trip, right? Field trip, going outside, like to a stadium, a concert, a museum, and they give you two options: visiting a museum or participating in a music performance. Okay, so personally. I I was not like a huge I wasn't a huge fan of art in the beginning in elementary school. But you know, this one day we went to an art museum, and this I'm this is I'm, I'm telling you a real story. We went to an art museum, and I was just like you know walking around, just wandering around, just you know I wasn't in the group that I was supposed to be in, and you know my teacher caught me, and suddenly I was joining this tour, and this tour was、um, explaining some work about, of Picasso. And you know they were talking about the part where he was crazy and about his love life and sort like that stuff like that. And I got so interested. You know, I thought people were just drawing or painting the stuff, but there's a story to each and every piece of artwork. So that's when I got sort of like hooked into art. I got so interested, and I started like to you know I started to draw paintings of my own, which. Wasn't so good, like you know Picasso, and you know I sort of got became interested in art, and this is a true story of mine. I once went to a museum in New York, and they had this picture of Van Gogh, his art. 
taken off and the other one still there and my dad told me a background story of how he cut off his ear and that was like oh my gosh he cut off his ear because it didn't look the same somebody told him that it didn't look the same so that was like really interesting to me so for me museum actually played a big role big part in making me become interested in art and this is exactly what i'm going to say in my answer see you don't have to sound so smart you can just tell your story and people will understand oh that was the case okay so listen to my answer i hope it lasts for one minute I think participating in music performance is better for students to do when going on a field trip. And there are several reasons to support my opinion. And most of all, it is very helpful for them. Uh, for example, when I was in high school, I was not interested in music. I didn't like music, so I didn't like music class. Whenever I was in music classes, I hardly ever focused. I was really a bad student back then. And needless to say, I always got bad grades in music. But one day, during the music class, we went on a field trip. We went to a musical performance. In the beginning, I didn't like it, but soon it became very interesting. I focused on the show. People were singing and dancing throughout the performance. I was amazed. The, they played all kinds of musical instrument live. It was very fascinating. And after that experience, I became interested in music. I focused in my class and eventually got good grades in music. That's why I think so. Okay, so I spoke for one full minute. And here, okay, the museum example, you already have mine, the art museum. I didn't like art. It's very similar. I was talking about how I hated music. I wasn't interested. I didn't like it. I didn't like singing. I wasn't a good singer, but I went to this musical performance. I went to this musical concert and it was amazing. It was live. People were singing live, dancing live, and I was so fascinated by it. So this is another version of the story that I wasn't interested in music, but suddenly this whole like field trip thing got me so interested. Okay, so we see a lot of questions like this saying about like when you were in high school, when you were young, what does field trip do to you, do to, do to those young students? They're going to be very helpful or not. So you should create a, create a story, create a, make up a story telling how your personal experience actually influenced you to you know, make up that result, come up with that result. Okay. So it was, you know, it was a glimpse of my childhood, but that actually played a huge role on me liking art. Yes. So I totally agree that field trips are very, very essential part of school life. So again, for part six, again, be a good storyteller. And this is going to give a smooth flow to your logic without sounding too smart and logical. All right, so that's it again, part six, very quick. I gave you six tips on how to get better score on TOEIC speaking, okay? So, but always, if you are aiming for level seven, guys, it's always about grammars. No matter how fast you talk, if you get the gra grammars incorrect, then you're, you have a very low chance of getting level seven. So I see a lot of a lot of you leaving comments, like asking me questions. How can I get level seven? That's my goal. If I get level seven, I'm gonna get a scholarship. Yay! Free money, right? Well, grammar is the key. Okay, grammars is the answer. You gotta use the correct grammars. All right. Thanks guys for watching the video and I'll be back next week. So if you liked it, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.